do take. Amen. It is our privilege and honor, amen, to be standing before you today. And uh, hallelujah. I've been looking at that clock. It seemed like it haven't moved. The hand haven't moved. I believe God might be redeeming the time. Glory to God. And causing time to stand still. I don't know if y'all ready for that, but amen. There might be some battles we still need to fight. <laughs> there might be some worship we still need to have. Glory to God. <laughs> amen. Some victories yet to be won. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. We praise and thank God. Amen. For this opportunity to see each and every one of you. Amen. Good to see you, Shana. Good to see you, AT. Good to see y'all. Amen. To all the people of the Lord, God bless you all. Amen. We're going to the word of the Lord. Amen. And we're not going to be before you long. Amen. I, I'm, I'm so glad to see you at the table. That's a good place for you today. Ah, you don't know why, but I do. It's a good place for you today. Good place for you to be. And for you that are at home, amen, as you're sitting at your table at home, that's a good place to be. Very good place to be today. Amen. We're going to the book of Philippians. Book of Philippians. Chapter 3. <laughs> I believe it. Sister Kim, you know what's happening right now. What, I, what is that song? Yes, 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 yes. Whatever it is, it's in the room. Whatever it is, whatever. can help me sing. Whatever it is. resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death glory to God whatever it is whatever whatever it is whatever God, we thank you for your word. Your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our pathway. God, we pray that you are glorified and the devil is horrified. Thank you for a certain victory. Thank you for overcoming. Thank you for the blood. Thank you for being a risen Savior. And God, all that we need 
It's all in you. You are the answers to all our problems. You are our resolve today. You're our hope. In Jesus' name we pray. Whatever it is, whatever it is, come on. Whatever it is, whatever it is, this sin, healing is here. chapter 3 of Philippians that the Bible says that Paul Paul shares with us this exhortation to know Christ and to know him in the power in the power of his resurrection through the fellowship of his suffering it is Christ in, in this moment that Paul is talking about it is it is. Paul that is saying, he's indicating to us that Christ is willing to suffer with us. He's willing to hurt with us. And you'll understand him better in the process. Understanding that, that in his death, suffering is a call to intimacy. It's a call to intimacy with a risen Savior. In his death, we know him better. Isaiah 53, verse 3 and 4 says, He is despised and rejected of men. A man of sorrows. He's not a God of sorrows, but he's a man of sorrows. And acquainted with grief, and we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteemed him stricken and smitten by God and afflicted. It was a cross where he died. He died on the cross and on the cross there were these wonderful sayings. In fact, we know them as the seven sayings of Christ. And in those words, a progression of the will and purpose of God for the redemption of all mankind was laid summed up in the Gospels. And it was the first three words that were uttered between the third and the sixth hours, which was nine o'clock to twelve o'clock noontime. They are referred to as forgiveness and fellowship. Jesus said in Luke chapter 23, verse 34, he said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Jesus came to forgive sinners according to Luke chapter 19 and 10. He says, for the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. Through forgiveness, sinners make God their Father. Scripture says, and he came to his own. His own received him not, but as many as received him gave he power to become sons of God to those who believe on his name even if they were even if they were sitting in ignorance Jesus yet on the cross said father forget them even if they couldn't recognize what they were doing father forget them for they know not 
what they do. It was in death that Jesus also uttered the words to the male factor on the side of him. Amen. Assuring our future with him. Now as they hung there, Jesus told the male factor, he said, Verily I say unto you, this day thou shalt be with me in paradise. When will I be with you? Today. Today is the acceptable time to re receive Christ into your life. It's an individual thing. It's a thing that we have to do it for ourselves. It's personal. It assures us of a life hereafter. Jesus says, thou shall be with me. Where I am, you shall always be. Also be. In paradise, heaven is the promise that is given only to those who repent. It was in Jesus' death that he kept on talking. It is in Jesus' death when he deals with the responsibility of this world. Deals with his family and he looks at his mother and said, woman, behold thy son. Son, behold thy mother in the death of Jesus. Jesus is yet practicing what he preaches. Though he sought the will of the father, he never neglected his mother. It was in these three words on the cross he revealed his work as a high priest. Yes. Through interceding for transgression, from proclaiming pardon to the ignorant, from bestowing blessings on his own. It was Jesus who began to speak yes. uh -huh. as a high priest, as one who would stand in the gap for all mankind. Fourth and fifth words spoken on the cross. And as they were spoken, the Bible lets me know they were spoken in darkness. It's Matthew chapter 27 and verse 45. It says darkness came over the whole land. Uh -huh. It was about three o'clock when darkness came over the whole land. That nature was wrapped in gloom. Yeah. And the God man bearing the burden and curse of sin. It was not his own revealed to us something of a mystery of suffering. It was then that he cried out after three hours in darkness. After three hours in darkness, he cried out on the cross. The only time he ever called his father God. He said, my God, my God, why have thou forsaken me? To show you that he also uh, understands the human experience. He was exhausted unto thirst. And he cried out on the cross and said, I thirst. Yeah. Three hours in the darkness, he continued to reign over Calvary. No matter what darkness befalled him, he still continued to reign on Golgotha's hill. Continue to still reign, although death tried to, amen, clap his bony hands and say, we got him now. Yeah. 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 It was only until the last two words that Jesus uttered on the cross were words of victory. And Jesus cried out, it is finished. He sums up the whole meaning of why he came to redeem man. In the words, it was finished. All that was in the prophecy had foretold and foreshadowed. Jesus fulfilled it all. It is finished. The work was finished which his father had given him to do. It is finished. He looked back on his life and said, Lo, I come. To do the will of my God. It is finished. He made a perfect and sufficient sacrifice. 
and he satisfied, amen, hallelujah, the sacrifice that God needed to forgive the sins of the world. Amen. It is finished. It's finished. It's finished. Amen. Words of victory also led us to words that will, amen, continue to echo in the hearts of men and women everywhere. Right after he says, it is finished, he says, Father, Father, into thy hands. I commend my spirit. So in other words, he says, now since it's finished, I can take a rest. Now since it's finished, my work has been completed and I will leap out of darkness into your marvelous light. It's finished and God, I'm going into my rest. He didn't just plunge into the unknown, amen, but he ascended back to the Father. And death was robbed of its sting, and the sting of death no longer reigned over the people of this world. And you no longer have to be bound by death, sin, hell, and the grave. Grave, where is your victory? He got up with all power. In his hands, glory to God. To live is Christ and to die is gain. Amen. Look at somebody at your table and tell them to die, die, die. Put it in the chat. Just say die, die. To live is Christ and to die is gain. It's in death that we hear Jesus. It's in death that we see Jesus. Uh, we hear him cry out when he's pierced in the side. We hear him in agony. We hear him in pain. And death had the nerve to be real loud and boisterous. Death had the nerve to talk real loud in that situation. But thanks be unto God. But not only there was a death, but there was a burial. And the scripture lets me know in the book of Luke chapter 23, there was a burial. It was a man by the name of Joseph. Joseph went to Pilate. He was a Pharisee and he went to Pilate, just like Pilate, just like he did, uh, Nicodemus did. Yeah. Hallelujah. He went to Pilate. And Pilate gave him audience. And he asked for the body of Jesus. Yeah. Glory to God. And he took Jesus' body. And the Bible says that he wrapped him in fine linen. Yeah. And placed him in a tomb. Cut from a rock. Can you, can you hear it now? Can, can you hear it now? Can you hear the silence? He's in the tomb now. And in his silence, he's still speaking. There's no conversations. The burial is quiet. When death screams loudly, Joseph lays down a body that speaks no more. <laughs> and Joseph said, I still want him. He couldn't say no more words. But Joseph said, I still want him. I, I still want him. Is there anybody here that when Jesus is not talking, that you still want him? Because he can do more in his silence than we can do in our speaking. Is there anybody here that wants to know the rock that's trapped in the rock? Glory to God. Is there anybody here that wants to know Jesus and in his power to know him? 
He was hiding in silence. Glory to God. He was hiding when we couldn't see him. He was the answer hidden behind the rubbish. He was the solution to every one of our problems hidden behind a rock. Sometimes your answers are hidden behind your problems. Sometimes your solutions are hidden by, hidden behind your circumstances in this life. God is just waiting and we're crying out, Lord, how long? It's as if he's, as if the Lord is playing hide and go seek with you. <laughs> but when God is hiding, when God is not speaking to you, how does your faith operate? When the business is closed down during COVID, how did your faith operate? When you lost the jobs, how did your faith operate? When the streets were empty, how did your faith operate? When, did you, when you couldn't see your way out of COVID, how did faith operate? <sighs> no crowds. Mm. There's no crowds at the tomb. Uh, it, it's no more conventions at the tomb. It's no more revivals at the tomb. No one's being raised from the dead at the tomb. It's nothing but silence and quietness. God hides himself in death. You said it was a tomb, Lord. You said it was a tomb. Hallelujah. But God said, no, it's not a tomb. It's just a womb. Amen. It's an opening. It's a place where you're going to come out. Have you seen him? Have you seen him? Oh, my family is going upside down. Have you seen him? Glory to God. Hallelujah. The job ain't going the way I want it to go. Have you seen him? Oh, the relationship isn't going the way I want it to go. Have you seen him? Oh, I, 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 I just need to introduce you to a God that does not reveal, but God that a God that hides himself. He hides himself behind a rock. And some of you might be saying today, I don't know how I'm going to get out of this. Glory to God. I don't know how I'm going to get out of this situation. I've been here a long time. But let me remind you that it's only a point, an appointed season. It's only an appointed time. Amen. It's only for a moment that you're in this season right now. Because there is no seal, there is no devil in hell that can keep you behind. I, I hear the Holy Ghost saying he shouldn't have hit you behind the rock. He, he shouldn't, Sister Latasha, he shouldn't have hit you behind the rock. Uh, if, he, if he understood what he was doing, amen, he hid you behind the rock. Amen. All he did was hit you in good foundation. All he did was hide you in the chief cornerstone. All he did was hide you into the arms of Jesus. Uh, I, I hear it in my spirit. My spirit is saying he's a rock in a weary land. He's a rock when you need him the most. He, he's a rock. He's a shelter for you. Hallelujah. He's not just trying to keep you from something. He's trying to get you to something. And it's when he's hidden in the rock. I hear you, Sister Shabon. You're pushing me. Amen. You, you're pushing me. I heard you at home when you were crying out. Amen. you pushing me. Amen. I heard you when we were on Zoom. You pushing me. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank God for the rock. He's, he's just the rock of my salvation. He's a good hiding place for me. 
He's a mighty friendly refuge for me. Amen. And when I need him, he answers my call. When I desire to see him, he comes in my presence. He is God, the God of my trouble, the God of my trial, the God of my tribulation, the God of my suffering. And I want to know him. In all of his power, in all of his majesty, I want to be intimate with him. And I'm most intimate with him when I'm suffering. Somebody ought to tell the devil, you ought to watch out who you're messing with. You you ought to watch out who you're messing with. You've poked me too much. You've been hindering me for too long. I'm coming out of this. coming out of this coming out of this the silence is about to be broken I'm coming out of this oh oh, hallelujah the grave has held me too long I'm coming out of this I've been fighting by myself for too long I'm coming out of this and I hear the Lord say when I come out My family is coming out. When I come out, hallelujah, my children are coming out. When I come out, my peace is coming out. When I come out, my joy is coming out. When I come out. Let, Let me help somebody real quick. It's it's important how you break the silence. It's it's important. Amen. It's important that you have the right attitude when you break the silence. Some of y'all been cooped up in your home for a whole year. It's important. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When the city tried to mute your praise, y'all remember that when he tried to mute your praise, it's important how you come out of silence. It's important that your hallelujah, that your thank you, Jesus, that your glory to God be in the house of God, that your thank you, Lord. Put it in your chat right there where you are and tell somebody I'm coming out of silence. I'm I'm coming out of my silence. I'm coming, I'm coming out of my silence. So we find Jesus talking in his death, silent in his burial, and breaking the silence in his resurrection. And when he breaks his silence in resurrection, the Bible says that he finds two men on the road. Yeah, y'all was in Sunday school. Y'all heard this one already. He finds two men on the road. And as he finds them on the road, he finds them arguing about what's going on in their circles. What's going on? What's happening in the world? This is world news. Glory to God. COVID has been world news. Injustice has been world news. All these things have been going on. And there's a lot of theories about them. (laughs) There's a lot of talking about them. Glory to God. Amen. But Jesus comes along. And he he approaches them, Elder Weaver. And he says, listen. uh, What are you talking about? What are you arguing about? And the men looked at him and said, listen, don't you know what's going on? Where where, where are you from? Haven't you heard the news? (laughs) And there are some of you that are here today. Amen. The devil tried to put you on channel 10. 
Amen. He tried to put you on Instagram, Facebook, and all social media to let everybody know that you are dead, buried, and in the grave, and that death has held you down, or whatever trouble has held you down. But thanks be unto God that we have the victory through Christ Jesus. And I don't care what type of gossip they said about you. I don't care what type of misinformation, amen, they spoke about you. Thanks be unto God for the truth. One thing you have to pick up on is that Jesus was walking with them. And when Jesus is walking with you, the truth is walking with you. And the Bible says, although they had theories, had their own opinions about what was going on, and in fact, they had some facts. They said, it's the third day. And he promised me some things. It's, it's the third day, honey. And he promised me some things. Oh, and I don't see him. Oh, it's a bad situation. Amen. To be walking with Jesus, and he's still hid from you. You're in a bad situation when you've been walking with Jesus and he's yet hiding from you. Scripture says that Jesus began to talk to him. And then, then he says, listen, uh, I'm, I'm not going to stay with you. I got somewhere to go just a little bit further. And the Bible says that as he was acting like he was getting ready to go, Brother Brian, the Bible says they, they said, come here. Come on inside with us. Yeah. He said, come on inside with us. When he came inside with them, yeah. Bible says he began to talk to them about the law. He began to talk to them about the prophets. Yeah. Ooh, glory. And let, let me remind you of something. Jesus also did this at the Mount of Transfiguration. Hallelujah. You had Moses on one side. You had Elijah on the other. You had the law on one side and you had the prophets on the other. And God looked at all three and said, this is my son. Hear him. Oh, glory to God. If y'all, if I, I know we in COVID and ain't too much room to run around the church, but somebody ought to ran around the church right there. Amen. I know the law. I know what the prophets had said. Amen. But here is Jesus. Hear him. Him, 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 him. Woo. Hey, bro. Hey, I, I think we almost need that Holy Ghost track right now. Amen. Hear him. And, and the Bible says this, Brother Jerry. And, and if you would, amen, just, just give me a visual for the people. Amen. Uh, you, you probably want to switch the screen to Brother Jerry. The Bible says that Jesus goes inside the house. And he takes a chair and, and sit at the table. Amen. Just take a real quick scan around the room. Just He sits at the table. And, 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 and Pastor Williams, he says, the Bible says he reclines back. He takes a seat in the chair and reclines back. And the Bible says, after he reclines back, he begins to break bread. There's something about the table. There's something about the table. There's something about the breaking of bread, which was broken for you. There's something about the table. When Jesus begins to break, when Jesus begins to break the bread, the Bible says, at the table. The Bible says, at the table. Their eyes were open. At the table. They saw him in his glory. At the table. They saw him in strength and power. At the table. Go ahead if 
you would, just recline back in the seat and see Jesus in all of his glory. Sitting at the table, the Bible says their eyes were open. The Bible says that they begin to talk one to another. Didn't your heart, did, didn't your heart, didn't heart, didn't it burn within? As he began to talk to us, did it begin to burn within? As he began to speak to your mind, as he began to speak to your situation, did it burn within? It's Jesus sitting at the table, the master talking about the master, the rock talking about the rock. Jesus sitting at the table. He's the word talking about the word. He's the life talking about your life. He's the giver talking about what's been given. It's Jesus at the table of your life, of your situation, of your family, of your future. It's Jesus at the table. Won't you see him in all of his glory? Scripture said in the resurrection that they saw him. They recognized him and he disappeared. Disappeared and they couldn't hold their peace. He disappeared and they had to go tell somebody. So they went all the way back, miles away and found the disciples and said everything that he said was true. It didn't return unto him void, but he accomplished everything that he set out to do. Every promise that he made, it was completed. Everything that he spoken, it didn't fall to the ground. I want to encourage you today, every word that the Lord has spoken about you won't fall to the ground. Every promise that God has made for you, God wants you to experience the power of the resurrection. There's power in his resurrection. But you have to make up in your mind, you have to make up in your mind that even if I suffer, even if some things die in my life, that God, for you I live. And for God, you I die. See him in his resurrection. See the power of the resurrection. He has enough power for you today. Everyone that's in here, young or old, he has enough power to save you. He has enough power to deliver you. He has enough power to love you beyond your faults. Listen, there, there are some people that truly believe they truly believe that they've been exiled out of a family. Let, let me say this plain and clear. They truly believe that when they fall short in a family, that they, they can never return to that family. They can never go to the family reunions. They can never sit at the table. I'm too dirty. I have too much sin in my life. But look at your own family. Look at your natural family. When your children make mistakes, you don't kick them out. When 
when you go to the family reunion, you still see the same uncle, you still see the same auntie, you, see, you still see the same cousins. Yeah, they owe you money, but they still your family. Just go on and tell them, keep it. It's been two years. I forgot about it. The same thing is for you. You believe in the precious blood of Jesus Christ. You've been washed. You've been bought. Not by what you've done, but by what he's done. He did it. There's no work you can do. <laughs> There's no work you can do that qualifies you to be part of this wonderful family. But it's by faith and grace in the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Faith in the precious blood of Jesus Christ. And now you become a part of the family. And when you mess up, it's just like you. You going back to your mama and saying, Mama, I'm sorry. Daddy, I'm sorry. Yeah, I took the cookie out the cookie jar. I'm sorry. You just go back. And you get it right. With your family. You go back and get it right with your father. When you come to yourself, go back and get it right with your father. He's your father. Sin has no more dominion over you, no more power over you. And today, you're sitting at the table. You're at home. You're sitting at the table. And we're about to break bread together. And I believe as we break bread together, we'll recognize all the wonderful things that Christ has done for us. As we sit at the table today, as you sit in your seat, as you sit in your seat at home, you'll recognize all the many things that God has done for you. He's been faithful. He's been your strength. He's been your help. Come on, if you're here right now, normally we go into breakout rooms and all of that, but right there at your home on Zoom, right there where you are on YouTube, on Facebook, wherever you are, right here in this house, amen, we're going to get it right with our Father. Let's get it right with our Father. Let's get it right with our Father. Scripture says if you confess your sins, God is faithful and he is just to forgive you of all of your sins. Those things you feel that are hidden. God sees it and he knows you. He's not a stranger to it. He knows you. But he wants you to embrace him. He wants you to believe him this moment. Come on, lift up your hearts toward heaven. Lift up your hearts towards heaven. That's what he wants. He wants your heart more than he wants your hands. Hallelujah. He wants your obedience more than he wants your work. Hallelujah. He wants it. He wants it. Father God, you know, on this resurrection morning, let it be our testimony today that we got it right with you. On this resurrection morning, let it be our testimony, God, that you blotted away all of our sins. On this resurrection morning, God, we confess our faults to you. Come on, just begin to lift your heart towards him. Just begin to speak with him. Speak to him. Speak to him. Right there on Zoom, speak to him. Right in that room, speak to him. 
you speak to him. Hallelujah. Lord, I'm sorry. God, forgive me. Lord, wash me. God, sanctify my mind and heart. I want to be more like you. I've had some missteps. I've looked at it wrong. My opinion overrode my love for you. God, I ask you to forgive me. Wash me. Wash me in the blood. Come into my heart. Change me. I exchange my fear for your strength. Hallelujah, Lord. Change me. Change me. Lord, I believe. I believe today. I believe. I believe that you died. I believe that you were buried. And I believe that you rose again for me. You are the Son of God. Come into my heart. Let it be my testimony that you're a forgiving God, that you're a loving God, that you're a patient God, you're a long-suffering God. Wrap your arms around me because I need your love right now. Heal me. Heal me, heal me, heal my heart. Lord, I thank you for being my high priest. Thank you for salvation. Thank you for the power of your resurrection. And I believe that in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, let's everyone give God a hand of praise.